Hi, plant girl here. Today I'm planting out some strawberries. My strawberry patch has a few spots that are missing, so I'm going to be planting a few just to add in and fill up the, the pot. I'm also going to be planting celery. If you've never planted celery in your garden, I highly recommend you try it. Celery is a vegetable that a lot of people don't seem to really care for when it's bought from the store. And somebody told me a few years ago that they had had some celery that was straight from the garden and how much sweeter and more delicious it was. And I've been growing celery ever since, and I have to agree. Celery grown in your own yard is much better than celery that you buy at the store. The key to growing good celery is getting lots of water to it. It likes water. If you let it dry out, it's going to become bitter. So I'm going to get these in the ground. Come along with me and see how I do it. Okay. So strawberries aren't a very fussy plant. They just like to have six to eight hours of sun and somewhere to spread their roots and a little bit of moisture and they'll be happy. Now, there's different kinds of strawberries. You can buy ever-bearing strawberries, which will produce strawberries throughout the entire growing season, but they tend to be a little bit smaller. Berry, still a nice sweet berry usually, but just on the smaller side. Then there's June-bearing strawberries. And those ones will produce most of their crop in June. They'll be a little bit of a larger strawberry than the ever bearing. So that's something to keep in mind if you're shopping for berries. If you have a preference, I like to have a combination in my strawberry patch. This guy's got a little dried out. Look at all those beautiful flowers already. Gorgeous. We'll be having fruit in no time. So strawberries usually come from the store like this. Like I bought them potted up or you can buy them bare root. If you buy them bare root, they usually have a, a large clump of roots packaged together and you just need to soak them for about an hour and then you can plant them in the ground, just keep the crowns slightly raised so that they don't rot. Otherwise, you can just go in the ground and... The strawberries will spread out over time. They send out runners. Give them a little bit of space and keep an eye on them. The more energy they're putting into putting out their runners, which is like this type of a thing coming off of here. See, it doesn't have a flower on it. It's just another stem, no big leaves or anything. It's looking to go out, find some earth, put roots down and grow a new plant. So if you want to expand your strawberry patch, you can let the runners spread and grow and as they root in you can cut them off from the main plant and either leave them where they were or you can dig them out and put them in a new spot. Or if you want your strawberries to put more effort into growing strawberries, the berries, then you can trim those runners off and they will uh, put more energy into the berry. So there's the strawberries, all planted in the new holes. And I'll give them a good drink. You can see some of my older berries there. I don't know if you can see that. They're starting. You can see some of my older strawberry plants there. If you look down in the middle there, it's starting to die out. So it's just gotten old. There's some old crowns there. I don't know if you can see those. But so they've just started to die out. 
and uh, so I'm just replacing them with new plants. Like I said, I could wait, let some runners grow and get more berries that way, but I think it's time. These plants are pretty old and I've restarted them a few times. I think it's time to just get a few new plants in there. So that's what I'll do. Now, another thing, I don't know if you can tell what this is, but these kind of pinkish things, you know, I am Canadian. They're off an old hockey net. Some of the rails off an old hockey net. And once the strawberries start producing berries, I string a piece of uh, netting across that net, the net post there. And that keeps the netting up off the berries, but it also keeps the birds out. So that's what I do to grow my strawberries. So tuck them into any corner. They're beautiful even just in your flower bed. So pick a spot, plant some strawberries, and you'll have some delicious little snacks every time you go out in the garden. Now let's get some celery planted. So I'm just putting the celery at the end of where I planted the peas. And I don't know if you can see them, but they are starting to poke up here. i show you these peas. So there, there's the peas. They're starting to, starting to come up. So like I said before, celery likes a nice, moist place to grow. Lots of water every week, that's the most important thing. And I'm putting it at the edge of this bed here, just so I can more than easily come out, check on it, give it water, and snip off a couple little stalks whenever I want to. Because that's celery, you don't have to pull the whole plant, you don't have to wait for it to mature. And I think that's one of the best benefits out of growing your own celery because you can just come out whenever you need a little bit of celery or something. I think you're making those Sunday Caesars or some stuffing for roast chicken. You can just come and you can just pluck a couple stems off, whatever you need. As long as you're leaving, I'd say about two thirds of the plant, you're going to be good to just take some off, take it in the kitchen, nice and fresh. dish around there just to hold extra water so that when they get watered they're going to have lots of moisture sit around there and have time to soak in. Celery can go a little bit deeper too, that's fine. They used to actually plant celery very deep and do what they call blanching it. I don't know if you know we can buy blanched celery anymore, but that's just when you would pile like sand or really loose soil up high, so you put up high on the plant and it makes a much lighter because it's blocking the sun so you can't get the chlorophyll. So if you want your celery leaves blanched then you can pile up some very loose soil or sand and block the light from getting to the stems. Then you just have extra washing off to do. So we'll get our last Last one in here. These guys a nice deep drink. So there, when you put that little dish of soil mounted up in a ring around the outside like that, it gives the water some time to sit there and soak in instead of just running off. Okay. 
so we've got the celery and the strawberries all planted and as you can tell it doesn't take very long to do it now both of these plants are great um, plants that you can easily tuck into a flower bed or into a pot they don't need much room like 15 to 20 centimeters which usually you can find a little corner to tuck in and if they don't get that much they'll be fine as well just make sure you give them a nice amount of food some compost and water especially the celery like I said needs the water so it doesn't take very long and you can have some delicious snacks in your garden anytime you want so give celery and strawberries a try in your garden and thanks for watching. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, then feel free to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to leave a comment down below if you, you have any questions. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.